everybody. So I'm a little nervous. I don't do Facebook Lives too often, but anytime I get the opportunity to share my story, I hop on it because pap smears are very important. Um, cervical cancer is a huge killer in the United States. It's a terrible form of cancer. And for some people like me, the journey to motherhood is not that easy. It's not as easy as everybody else you know, makes it seem on Instagram, Facebook, you know, all the lovely families, your friends, you know, watching their children grow up and you are 30 years old thinking, oh, I want that so bad. So that's why I decided to be vocal about my journey to motherhood. Um, I want other people to be aware that it's not so easy for some people for a ton of different reasons. Um, there's all kinds of reasons people can't conceive like everyone else, mine happens to be because of my journey with cancer and having cervical cancer, having a hysterectomy. So that is why I wanted to hop on and share my struggles and everything I've gone through with you guys. So you can get a better idea of how people in my shoes um, feel when it comes to fertility and all sorts of things to do with that. So I will start out with how I was diagnosed. Um, my mom had always told me, Lorena, go to the doctors every year. Pap smears are very important and you don't want to miss one. So I was very adamant about going every year for my pap smear. I had no symptoms at all when I was 21 years old being diagnosed with cervical cancer. I just went in for my yearly paps and doctors said, um, you know, we're gonna do a biopsy. We think that there's cancer cells. I didn't tell anyone in my family. I just, you know, did the biopsy. I was getting tons of calls from my doctor. I wouldn't answer because I knew deep down inside that something was wrong. Um, my doctor actually contacted my mom and said, your daughter needs to call me. I cannot disclose why, but she needs to contact me as soon as possible. So I contacted my doctor and I got the news at 21 that I had cervical cancer. So I started looking into cervical cancer and I realized that it's very common. Um, it's caused by HPV, which 85% of people have HPV. It's very common and it can also be more deadly than breast cancer, which, which most don't know, um, because you always hear about breast cancer and the pink ribbon and and so cervical cancer is actually like a worse killer than breast cancer. It's just usually diagnosed because of pap smears. So pap smears are super important. I literally, when I'm in line at grocery stores, I start talking about you know my struggles and my cervical cancer, and I bring it up to people because most people miss their pap smears, and pap smears are so important. I literally probably would have died if I didn't go for my pap smear and I would have waited five years. Even now doctors are like, Lorena, you're fine. You don't have cancer anymore. You, we don't wanna see you every year. And I'm like, you know what? I'm my own health advocate and I will come in every year for my pap smear because it's scary. And women just need to be the voice and we need to talk about it. Pap smears are totally normal um, to get. It's very important for our, you know, our health to get pap smears. So now that it's Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, I <clears throat> want to be very vocal about how important pap smears are. So I was diagnosed at 21 with cervical cancer. Um, I, I had many surgeries. I had a cone biopsy. Doctors keep cutting, keep cutting. They said, you know, you have the option to do a hysterectomy. Would you like to do one? So I flew to Cedar sinai in LA and did my second opinion there. And the doctor said, looked at my paperwork, looked at everything going on and said, Lorena, you know, with your history of cancer in your family, it will be better to get a hysterectomy. Um, so I made that choice at 21 years old to have my cervix and uterus taken out knowing that I will not be able to carry a children someday, which was extremely, extremely hard at 21. But I looked at it like I would rather be a mom someday and be around for my kids and get that surgery out of the way and done than, you know, worry about it coming back. Because one side of my family, my grandma, passed away of uterine cancer and the other side, my grandma had a mastectomy from breast cancer. So I am super like, oh my gosh, let me get this taken care of. 
So 22 years old, I got a hysterectomy, which was the removal of my cervix and my uterus. Um, we did it with a robot. It was called the Da Vinci Robot, and it was brand new back then. Um, I had a woman doctor. I remember I was across the room looking at my doctor before you know going to sleep for the surgery, and she was like on a computer. So she was literally doing my surgery from across the room on a computer, and there was little like little hands that went in. I'll show you my scars actually. Here's my hysterectomy scars. You can see, I think they did four, but you can barely see them now. So anyways, got my hysterectomy out of the way and I was nowhere near thinking about having kids at this point. I wasn't worried about, you know, what the future held. I was just living my life, happy to be cancer free. Um, well, Later on, when I'm 26, I meet Thomas, and I basically knew he was the one. And I moved to Texas a year after. Now we're engaged. So I started looking into my egg retrieval probably about two years ago. Um, I was very into figuring out the best way to go about it because I know how costly it can be. I decided to contact the Live Strong Foundation, which helps cancer patients and cancer survivors like me um, with fertility problems. So the Live Strong Foundation was able to tell me, hey, we work with three clinics in Dallas and you can choose which one you'd like to go to. It's a big, big discount that we offer. All you have to do is jump through a million hoops. No, <laughs> all you have to do is, you know, this, this, and this. I had to send in my taxes. I had to get my oncologist to write a note. I had to send in medical records. So I was approved with Livestrong and I'm so thankful that the fertility specialist of Texas works with you know, nonprofits such as Livestrong because I don't know if like financially we could have done all of this. So I choose live i choose the um, fertility specialists of texas because i read all about them i read about their reviews i looked online i saw the pictures of the families of the babies um i ended up with dr chilvers she's a female doctor and she is phenomenal uh for me in my journey it was very hard to figure out when my period was for my egg retrieval because i don't bleed on my cycles which is confusing to some people so I have my ovaries still and they drop eggs each month. I just don't have that symptom of a period. So I just don't bleed. So it was really um, difficult to figure out because when you're doing egg retrieval, you have to go in on your first day of your cycle. And I'm like, what am I? I know when I'm hungry. I know when I'm grouchy. The whole house knows. I know when I'm on my period. So we thought we had it down the first time. Unfortunately, with journeys such as this and egg retrievals, nothing goes as planned and everybody's story is different. So I did four days of injections just to realize that my cycle, my eggs were already dropping. So we had started a bit too soon. So that was kind of a letdown because um, it's a lot of work to put your body through and also mentally doing injections for egg retrieval. I hate needles. So so for egg retrieval, there's one medication that stops you, that keeps your ovary, that keeps your egg follicles growing to produce all these eggs, because usually only one will grow to full term. And the other shot is to stop um, ovulation because we don't want the eggs to drop. We want to have them, you know, pulled out at the perfect time. So that is what the injections are for, and I'm terrified of needles. Um, so I did four days of injections twice a day to realize, shoot, I am um, already ovulating, this is not good. So at that point, I waited a few months. I let my body get back to normal. I had a cyst. I had to wait for my cyst to go away because my doctors wanted all of my levels perfect. And I, um, we started, I, you know, I went in for blood work and we started injections again for my egg retrieval. So this time it went wonderful. Leanne was my um, third party coordinator. She um, called me, I guess I was supposed to go in for blood work one day and she called me and she's like, Lorena, where are you? And I was like, I didn't know I was supposed to be in today. And she goes, well, yes, you are. So I went in and luckily she had called me because that's when they figured out my levels were perfect and voila, it was time to start um, injections again for my retrieval. Thank you. The Fertility Specialist of Texas has literally done so many things to like help me with this process. Like they went over and above to like see me as a person 
and make sure that this happened for me. And I'm like so grateful for all of the nurses. They all have smiles on their faces when I walk in, um, you know, and just, like it's just the best vibe you could possibly ask for when you're doing something so in intense and important in your life. So thank you for Chile Specialists of Texas. So on with my injections. I finally get through my injections and in, I believe it was 10 days. So it's 10 days, twice, two shots a day, and then you add a few more like as you know it progresses. So at the end I had four shots the last day, which was really intense for me. I was over shots at that point. But we got through it. The retrieval process was really easy, actually. Um, Thomas and I went in at like six in the morning. You know, they lightly sedated me, put me, you know, lightly under, took out, uh, we took out 13 eggs, and which was awesome. And 10 of them were healthy enough to um, stick in their cryo bank. They said, okay, these 10 look good. So I'm like, yes, 10 eggs. So now Thomas and I are like, okay, we have to start embryo creation. This is like so cool. So we had Thomas go in and he's probably gonna be really embarrassed that I'm sharing this, but what they do for the men in there, because it can be kind of uncomfortable. There's a lot of women nurses like outside the room that Thomas is supposed to like give his sperm in that room. So they gave him uh, headphones and a TV with some really good stuff on it. And yes, I did offer to go in with him and he said no, because he was embarrassed. But luckily they had the headphones and they had the TV and he was e able to do his sperm, sperm sample. They tested his sperm and they're like, wow, well he has four vials of amazing sperm and we're only even gonna need one. So this is so good. So uh, um, because we're using a gestational carrier to carry our baby, we had to go through all the FDA screenings. So um, Thomas and I both had done all of this prior to egg retrieval and um, sperm sample because they wanna make sure that all of it looks perfect if they're gonna put it in someone else, which makes complete sense. So he did his sperm sample. We then were like, okay, well, yeah, embryo creation. So they took his sperm and they placed each sperm into each 10 of my eggs. And this was like the day before Thanksgiving. So I called them and I was like, you know what? If they want to break and they want to go eat their turkey with their family before um, doing this, like let them go eat their turkey with their family because this is so important. They're like, no, we're fine. We're in the office anyway. We're doing your embryo creation. So I'm like, okay. So they give you updates every couple days. So they updated us on day one and they said, okay, out of the 10 eggs, we mixed Thomas's sperm with those eggs. You have seven left. So I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, seven left. So then they updated us in two more days. So I think it's day three. So they said, okay, out of those seven, you only have four left. So I'm freaking out at this point. I'm like, wow, these numbers are dropping really fast. So then day five came around and they said, okay, congratulations, you still have those four. They're hanging on strong. Um, would you like to get them genetically tested? So um, Thomas and I decided that we wanted to have our embryos genetically tested. So we sent those four embryos off for genetic testing. So the embryos went to genetic testing and we got the call, I believe it was like in a week or a week and a half. And that's the embryo video I'd posted. I was actually about to like, I was all dressed up and I was gonna like do some photo or something and I got the call. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna document this process. So I had, um, we had the call with the embryologists or the genetic testing saying, okay, you have, um, two embryos that came back normal. You have one boy and one girl, and that was the best call I've ever received in my whole entire life. <laughs> it was amazing, because um, I didn't want to put my body through another egg retrieval, because it was really hard on me. And um, I was just having faith the whole time that this, this one would work out, because some women have to go through many, many, many egg retrievals in order to get their miracle baby. Um, and I know these people, these people have reached out to me. They're like, wow, I've done six cycles to try to get good embryos. And it's, the process is difficult. So we have these two embryos. Now we get to find a gestational carrier 
I joined a few Facebook groups a few months ago to get an idea of the whole surrogacy world. I wanted to know what these gestational carriers were thinking, why they were going into it, what problems they would have. I wanted to really get a feel of, um, of what they were thinking and also like terminology. Like there's a lot of stuff in the surrogacy world where it's like, what does that mean? So I kind of laid low for a few months and then I was also waiting on my news about embryos. So I finally got the news and I'm like, okay, I'm going to post. So I did a post. So like I posted and I said, this is Thomas and I, this is our story. This is why I cannot get pregnant. Um, this is what we're looking for. Uh, people are looking for all sorts of things when it comes to surrogates or gestational carriers. Some people want more of a business transaction. Some people want someone who's going to, you know, be in the same town as them and make it super personal. They want a friendship. I, of course, wanted a friendship. So I posted. I said, I would love someone where we could go to appointments together and get lunch together and, you know, make it a journey between two families and share it loud and proud and not be ashamed of it, which every person is different. I, like, I would never, you know, be upset with someone for not being loud and proud about it like I am because, honestly, it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts to share your story and to share, like, I want to be a mom so bad, but I can't. And it's just, it's an emotional roller coaster and it's very, very difficult to do. Um, so I, you know, told the Facebook group what I was hoping to find. I shared a little about Thomas and I, and I got a lot of awesome responses. Uh, it was also shared within the community of surrogacy and gestational carriers. Um, I, uh, did lunch with someone the other day who is an amazing, amazing, amazing special person. And I actually haven't talked about this yet um, to anybody besides like my close family, but um, she, her and her husband are simply amazing and they have two beautiful kids and we really connected and um, I'm not going to go into it anymore just because things legally haven't been done yet. But I think we found our family and our surrogate, which is the most exciting thing ever. And as far as what we will be doing next is um, we are gonna be working with the agency. So uh, both the surrogate as well as us can be covered in case anything were to happen. Um, they cover all the bases. They help us with like, you know, how the birth order is gonna go. And there's so many different things about like going into the hospital and like going there like not pregnant and then like leaving with the baby and like all of this stuff that you don't even think about and normal people with normal pregnancies don't even have to like think about. And so there's just like so much stuff, so much stuff. But I'm, I've like literally taken my journey one little tiny baby step at a time. And um, we're finally here to this point and it's like really exciting and um, the fertility specialist of Texas has helped me through like every step of the way. And I'm just like very grateful for them. I can call them like I've bugged the crap out of them and like they still love me. And um, it's just nice to work with a company that cares about you and cares about your family and wants you to be a mom someday. It's like it's not just a business to them. It's really like they're in it with all of their hearts. So um, that is my journey and where I'm at now. And um, I can't wait for this next year. It's been a really, really long, long process. And um, I feel like Thomas and I deserve it so, you know, so much and just as much as everybody else. But I just really want you to be aware of the struggles that women deal with with infertility and how difficult it is for us it's not easy you know like you hear oh oh like when are you gonna start a family and you know all of those questions that circulate on Facebook that says don't ask it really don't ask it like it is hard for some people to conceive I mean it, it's just it affects every every minute of your life thinking about like 
something that you want and you crave and you think as a kid like oh my god like playing with a doll like you're gonna be a mom someday like it's hard when you're 30 years old and it's not easy to be a mom like it is really really hard so I guess that's why I'm here and I'm sharing my journey with you guys and um warning you like Please stay on top of your pap smears. It will literally save your life. Remi remind your sisters, remind your friends, remind the people that you love to get those checks. And um, yeah, Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. I'm a cervical cancer survivor. I am proud. I did not let cervical cancer stand in my way of becoming a mom. I'm working towards that every single day. And um, yeah, if, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, message the Fertility Specialist, Fertility Specialist of Texas, or you can um, write me privately on Instagram. I've been a support for a lot of people who have not been super vocal about it, and I, I love it because we can connect with other women with our struggles, and I think that is so, so important. So please feel free to always just reach out to me, uh, you know, if you have any questions at all, if you just want support, anything. Like, I am here for you guys. Um, you know, my name is Lorena Corwin. That's how you can find me on Instagram. Uh, I think that's probably the easiest way to message me because my Facebook is all weird. It like doesn't show me any messages. So yeah, I just, um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys and I really appreciate the Fertility Specialist of Texas for helping me out. Thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.